Happy Friday for you. It's my Thursday. How are you guys doing? It's actually 8.30, and I just got done doing everything I needed to do for the day. And um, I was kind of waiting for a call from somebody, waiting on a call for some from somebody, but they're not calling me back. So anyway, um, and now I'm gonna go to the grocery store, and Alex is on his way home, and he has to take his friend somewhere at five o'clock in the morning, I think to a, like a medical procedure. So I'm like, you have to be there at five o'clock? He's like, I have to pick her up at five o'clock. I'm like, oh Lord. I don't even go to bed at that time. So anyway, he's gonna be doing that. And um, so he'll probably go to bed super early. And I'm gonna eat something and watch some TV with him. And then just relax. And I may do a you now stream later. Who knows? We'll have to see. And I was setting, working on setting up my merchandise shop today. I think I may have finally figured it out. Thank the Lord, because it's very confusing. I've had a good day. I'm so into this book that I'm reading right now, The Inexplicable Logic of My Life by Benjamin Elliott Science. If I remember, I'll link it below. Um, it's so good. I literally was bawling my eyes out earlier listening to it. It's, oh my God, it's so good. So anyway, there's that. And then I made videos on all of my channels today. And um, I've been like posting every day on all of my channels. I'm probably overwhelming you guys, aren't I? I've had a really good day, although it's freezing here. It was 30 degrees warmer yesterday, two days ago. It was 86, or was it yesterday and then it got cold? Yeah, yesterday was 86 and now it's 56. It's so cold here. And of course I still have shorts and flip flops on. So, um, and I'm really hungry for like a wrap sandwich. What is rattling? So I'm gonna go to the grocery store because they have these buffalo chicken wrap sandwiches. It like, <laughs> and I'm gonna get like some potato salad and chips and have a little picnic. Have a little picnic at home, with, like lemonade. Won't that be so fun? Yeah. Anyway, what's new with you guys? How are you doing? Woof pack, woof woof. And uh, let's see what else is new. I have, okay, so tomorrow night we're going to the singing competition at the casino um, for Alex's friend, Kayla, who I mentioned. So if you guys wanna see me, come to the casino in Shelbyville. I don't know what time we'll be there. I think we're getting there at like 7.30ish and then we'll be there for a while, I think. And then we're gonna go out to eat somewhere, but if you do ever run into me out in public, just come up to me and say hi. People always like, they're like, there he is. I'm like, okay, first of all, I'm not, like I joke about the YouTube famous thing, but I don't feel that, right? Like you guys know that. And if you see me in public, A, you'll say I'm taller than I look. B, I'm heavier than I look. And C, you'll be like, oh, so you really do wear a sweatshirt and jean shorts every day. Yep, I really do. Cut off jean shorts every day in the spring and summer. Although, the, I keep on doing that smack, smouth smack, mouth smack thing that I want to know how to do. Like Alyssa Edwards from RuPaul's Drag Race, but I can't do it. And Alex can do it, but I do it like when I'm not trying. But anyway, if you see me ever in public, just come up and say hi. I'm super friendly. Honestly, I am. I'll probably be like, <laughs> I get very nervous and socially anxious in public. But anyway, yeah, so that's that. And then Tawny might go with us tomorrow night too. And Jason and Melissa might go with us. So it might be a big fun night. And then Saturday, Alex has like this gala thing that he's going to for uh, so this doctor that he works with. He's going with her because they're doing like, they have like a table or something at it. Not like a table to sit at, like they do. They're going to the gala afterwards. But like when people are like walking around with drinks and stuff, they have like a, what do you call it? A, um, a booth. So he's going there to like work the booth with her. And then he's going to the gala. So Saturday night I'm on my own. I was gonna see if uh, Tanya wanted to do something. And then next weekend Alex is going out of town. So it's pee pee and pee a special weekend. It's pee pee and pee a special weekend. Don't worry about us, but Bradley and Tucker too will be having a lot of fun. How about you? That's the whole song, I wrote it. You can't copyright, it's copywritten so you can't steal it. You can't put it on your stuff. <laughs> Don't even try it, because I already copyrighted it. See? <laughs> Every time I sing a song, I'm just going to go, see? Copyright. 
<laughs> Let's see if I can remember the words. It's pee pee and Peter's bachelor weekend. It's pee pee and Peter's bachelor weekend. Don't worry about us, cause we'll be having lots of fun. We're Riley and Tucker too. How about you? <laughs> I don't think that was exactly the same, but I think it was close. <laughs> Mm. I love like writing little stupid songs like that. I totally get that from my dad. That was my dad all the way when I was growing up. He always had songs that he was writing. The Zones of Eatery song for his dogs and all that stuff. <sighs> Mrs. Ducky has a song. If you guys have been watching me from the beginning, you know who Mrs. Ducky is. My dad has this duck. I don't know if it's the same duck, but he has this duck every year. So my dad has a pool and he lives in the lake. And like every year this duck comes off the lake and swims in the pool and has these, gives her eggs, you know, and the baby ducks and all kinds of duckies, ducklings. So anyway, he always sets up like this, I'll have to take you guys out there and show you. He sets up this like baby uh, crib and makes this nest for her in there of like sticks and twigs and all leaves and stuff. And then he he cut out like this hole where he has like this like <laughs> slide that goes into the pool. And then she just slides right down the pool and then she flies back in. She sits on top of her eggs. It's very nice, but my dad cracks me up. He's so funny. I was at this grocery store that I go to, Marsh, and like somebody, like this was like, I don't know why, but I was like, oh my God. Somebody Snapchatted me and they like were driving by like two days after I had shown that on a vlog and they're like, look, we're, we're at your grocery store. I was like, oh my God, they're at my grocery store. I love that though. I'm not even gonna lie for one minute. I, God, I wish I was like, if I was like PewDiePie, PewDiePie is kind of an ass. If I had 40 million subscribers and I went places, I would be so friendly. I would eat that shit mm -hmm. up. I would totally eat that shit up. I would love it. I wouldn't be rude to anybody. Trisha Paytas actually talked about that the other day in like a rant video. She was talking about how she was at this event and these YouTubers wouldn't sign people's... They wouldn't take... We don't sign autographs anymore, do we? They wouldn't take pictures with like fans. Which, I'm so tired of people saying YouTubers don't have fans. That's such bullshit. I am a fan of so many YouTubers, and I'm not ashamed of that word. I am. There's so many YouTubers that I love. Oh, my God. If, like, Glozell Green or Tyler Oakley, well, if I saw that, I'd be like, Oh, my God, oh, my God, it's Tyler Oakley. I'd lose my shit. I mean, I've watched him since the very beginning. So, I don't think that's a bad term to use for YouTubers. I don't even understand why people don't like that. But I don't understand why people are rude about it, you know? Like, why wouldn't you just take a picture with somebody? I think that's nice. I wish somebody would ask me to take a picture of me. Anyway, somebody did. Lori, down in French Lick. That was really sweet. So, anyway, I'll be back later, guys. Bye. Hi, guys. I am leaving Tanya's house. And I wish that I had gotten a Kleenex before I left. Because my nose is totally bothering me. Somebody, what they just asked me? Where did you get the shirt that you wore in your grocery store rant? I don't know, let me see. Grocery store rant. Oh, Target. People, like, are really... Okay, like... I like nice clothes and nice things, and we've talked a lot about that on here, but, like, I don't need them. But, like, honest to God... Let's just say if I'm going to spend, like, my husband... And I are completely different about this. Like, he would rather go buy, like, a really nice pair of shoes and just have the shoes. I would rather go spend that money on, like, five t-shirts and two pairs of shorts from Target. But it's interesting because when I met Alex... Like, he didn't like Target and those kinds of things. He still won't st shop at thrift stores. It, he thinks it's, like, weird. Which is... At first, I thought it was kind of like... I don't know. There's, like, some weird things that are slightly cultural. Not, like, to all of Latinos, but to, like, his family. So, I don't know if that makes sense. Traditional to his family. But, like, his family has no issues 
this light is casting weird shadows on me tonight. Has no issues with thrift store clothes and stuff, and I love thrift store shopping. And he's like, when, we, when I make him go in there, he's like, this is so gross. <laughs> I'm sure you guys can imagine how it looks like that. But, there's this whole line of clothes at Target now. I think it's called like Jack or something that he loves. Like the long t-shirts and the ripped jeans and the skinny jeans and all that stuff. He loves all that stuff. Target has super cute clothes and I actually think some of them are kind of expensive. Um, not so much for the guys but for the girls. They have better clothes for the girls than they do for the guys but I have these like joggers on. Do you know what I'm talking about? I actually got these at Target and they're so comfortable. I don't usually wear sweatpants and um, but it was chilly outside tonight, so I was like, I better wear sweatpants instead of shorts. And um, they're super comfortable, but I'm just not used to not wearing shorts. Because I've been wearing shorts now for like the last month. I look bad tonight. Oh, because I have the other light on, that's why. Oh, there it is. Now I'm in the dark. So Tanya and I did a live stream tonight. Because Alex was on the phone. He has like phone dates with his best friend that lives in LA. Do you guys do that with your friends? So he was talking to her and at first I was trying to like kind of lay down a little bit and then I was like, I'll just Tanya text me and she's like, come over here and we'll do a live stream together. So I went over to her house and um, so yeah, that was what we did. And then Alex texted me, or he called me actually at, while I was in the live stream and said he was going to bed. He has to take his um, girlfriend to the to a doctor's appointment at like 5.30 in the morning. I'm like, oh my God. So, like a procedure that she's having is something to do with her stomach. So, um, I won't be getting up at 5.30 in the morning. I actually don't have to work tomorrow. So, I'm, oh my God. But anyway, so yeah, so that was my night. I had a good night, it was fun. I mean, it was relaxing, it was what we do, you know? Like, it was funny because people on the live stream were like, oh my God, this is so Midwestern. I mean, this is what we do. We get fountain pops and sit around and talk about reality TV and joke with each other. It's very Roseanne, my life is very Roseanne, you know? Like, um, I'm not trying to be something that I'm not, you know? And I think what's interesting to people is that I float kind of like, like people that know me in, in the real world, like not on YouTube necessarily, because I don't even know if you guys see it, are like, you kind of float in between worlds, Peter. Like, they're like, you know, you have, like, you go to music festivals and, you know, like, you go like out of town and stay in high end places and you like to do that, but then you have no problem like going to Tennessee and like Pigeon Forge and Gatlinburg is like one of your favorite cities to stay in like a ca cabin. And you know, it's like, I love everything. I just like experiencing life, you know? I just love it all. And, um, but in my heart of hearts, who am I really? I'm like Roseanne Connor in Lanford, in Illinois, you know, like, just going down the street with, you know, hanging out with my friends. I mean, that's really who I am in my heart of hearts. I've, and honestly, like, I've never really wanted more than that. Like, if for the rest of my life, and this is, a, this is a problem, a marriage problem, because Alex wants so much more. Like, he always wants to, like, we were, you know, talking about this and counseling this week. Like, I could do what I'm doing right now for the rest of my life and be completely content. He could not. Like, he has so many things he wants to do, and that's fine. But finding a balance between that for us, you know, like, because the difference is, is like, I don't have to do what I'm doing now for the rest of my life. Like, I could, but like, I can do what I'm doing and then go do other things and try new things as well. And so like, I can enter his world and go and do those things. And so like, it's kind of finding a balance. We were talking a lot about that in counseling this week, you know, about like, well, what are the things that you want to do and whatever? And the other thing is, is that, you know, Alex hasn't done a lot of traveling in his life. I've done a shit ton of traveling in my life. And so, like, he's ready to start doing a lot of traveling, you know, all around the world. And, um, you know, and now he has the jobs that he can do that. And I'm like, okay, well, let's do it. Where do you want to go? Well, he wants to go everywhere at once, you know? I'm like, well, okay, slow down. Slow your roll. Let's pick our first place and, you know, do a place or two a year. So I think this year is going to be Thailand because we both really want to do that. And then, 
you know, like Europe is really big for him, and I, that's just no offense to you guys out there in Europe, but like that's not that big to me, you know, like I just, I don't have a huge desire to do that, like, would I enjoy the vacation and the trip? Sure. But the other thing is, is that Alex is very much into seeing historical sites and tourist stuff. You wouldn't think that about him, but like he really is. And like, I'm not like at all. Like I want to go to Washington DC and I want to see the monuments and I want to see like the, you know, the Holocaust Museum and those kinds of things. But other than that, like, or like if we went, we would want to see different things. You know, like if I went to Paris, I want to see like Jim Morrison's grave and you know, like, I don't know, some famous cafe where Hemingway drank coffee at. Like he would like want to go see, you know, I don't know. Like we just would want to see very different things. But it was interesting tonight when, um, and talking about like opposites attract because Tanya and I in our live stream, I don't know if you guys caught this, but we were doing like a question and answer and people were asking us like peanut butter and she said creamy and I said crunchy. And then we were like, every question they ask us, Tanya and I answered exactly the opposite of the other person. And what was so funny about that is that we've been best friends for 20 years and like really we are so completely opposite. She's very conservative and I'm not, you know? And um, it's just interesting that A lot of our beliefs and our, our things that we love are so completely opposite from each other, you know? And yet we're best friends, so it works somehow, if that makes sense. But I think that's cool, you know? Because I think if you don't, then you lose interest. Like, Alex has, like, in, like he's made me do things that I wouldn't have done had I not been with him. I would never have probably gone to an electronic dance music festival. Now I love him. Now I would go to him even if he and I weren't together. And, you know, like, those are things he has inspired me to do. Um, you know, Alex reads more than he probably would if he had never been with me, you know? Or he'll listen to, like, loungier kind of, like, you know, old music, like... Nico or, you know, the Velvet Underground, things like that. Well, Nico and the Velvet Underground, but you know what I'm saying? Like, things that he wouldn't normally listen to, um, you know, or foods that he would never have tried, I think, because of me. Um, <laughs> Alex, a little unknown secret, is like the pickiest eater in the entire world. And apparently he's been like that ever since he was a little kid. His mom was like, Alex has always been like that. Like, he's so weird. He's so picky about food. And, uh, it's kind of cute, really. I love traveling with my husband. Did you ever have those places, like, that are, like, or those moments that are, like, great for you? Like, when we're on vacation, it's just, like, so perfect, you know? And I think the real trick to a great relationship or a great marriage is, like, bringing that back, you know? Bringing that passion that you have towards each other, like, back into here when you're here at home. You know what I mean? I know everybody's like, oh, he's so sad all the moment. Something, something's wrong. No, no, we're actually doing really well right now. And I'm not sad. I was just kind of in my head thinking about it. I was actually thinking to myself, like, Okay, so that's true, and I feel like we've done that maybe 70%, but like, what? how is Miami, just a recent trip, different from here? And I think one of the things is that we spent like literally all day, every day together, and we don't, and we're, we are not the couple that gets bored of each other. We just aren't. Like, we can spend all day together. We travel very well together. You know, like when I need a nap, he goes and walks. And if he needs a nap and I want to be bound by the pool, we do it. I mean, like, we both want a nap, you know? Like, it's, um... I think the other thing, too, without getting crass in my videos, is I think... But, you know, like, hey, listen, we're all adults, most of us here. If you're not, then this is a good lesson for you as you get older. You know, I think in your daily, regular routine, it's really hard to find time... It, it's hard to make time to be intimate. 
you know, because I think at the end of the day, you want to come home and you want to put it on your pajamas and like have a glass of wine or, you know, a pizza or watch a movie or, you know, for me, go to a meeting or for Alex, go have a glass of wine with one of his girlfriends and then he comes home and then we're there for an hour, but we're both tired. And at that point, who really wants to be that intimate? Honest to God, let's just relax and be in bed and look at Snapchat. You know, and then on the weekends, it's like, that's the perfect time. But I think that couples that stay intimate longer have a better chance of having very passionate relationships that last longer. I just really do. I'm a big believer that, are you going to ever turn, car? My Lord. I'm a big believer that um, couples that are having, like, a lot of sex over a long period of time are typically the ones that do very well. I mean, and I know that that's stupid, and a lot of people are going to be like, I don't agree with that at all. Well, I think the intimacy factor has to remain, or at some point you become roommates and friends. And I think that that's happened to all of us, okay, in a relationship. That, top, that happened to me, well, not in my first relationship, but in my last relationship, I mean, we just basically became best friends and I loved him I loved him dearly but I I don't know that we felt passionate towards each other anymore you know like listen I want to be married to my husband for 30 years and look across the table at him at dinner and just be like let's go fuck like you know I mean and I mean like on a very carnal level and if I offend somebody I apologize but I think that lust towards your partner is something that needs to stay true through your relationship and I'm not trying to offend anybody I honestly am not but we're talking about marriage we're talking about relationships you know and, and I think to be able to say that about your partner and still look at that person I mean Alex and I have been together for you know almost it'll be nine years in August and I still sometimes look at him and I think my god my husband is the hottest man I've ever seen you know and like and I know I've gained a lot of weight and I don't look like I used to but like what I love is like when like I'll be talking and like he'll just start laughing and it, you know like like that I can make my husband laugh or that I can do something that will I'll, I'll catch him staring at me thinking that I'm cute you know like that's such a great feeling I think I do also think that it's our responsibility to stay looking good and in shape for our partner. And I know that sounds like a piece of rat shit, and I haven't done it, but I do feel like that's my responsibility to some degree, you know? And to stay in a desirable mode, to want to be desirable to my husband and find him desirable and, you know, have good intimate relationships with our partners. And if there is a part of you out there, because I've been in these relationships before where I'm like, no, I don't agree with that or whatever. Well, then what the reality is you don't want to be intimate with your partner, you know, and then it's a bigger issue. Then the bigger issue is, well, what's really going on with you and your partner? You know, why don't you want to be intimate with them? Why are you making 50 excuses? And I think that's a scary place to be, you know, because it's like, am I not willing to open up? Am I not willing to be vulnerable to this person anymore? Why would I not want to have sex with my husband or wife why, or partner or boyfriend or whatever? Why would I not want to, you know, kiss them? Or I mean, intimacy doesn't have to be sex. It can be, you know, making out. Like, when's the last time you made out with your partner? And I think all of that is super important, you know? So I think it's okay to have the sex talk every once in a while with your partner or with your husband, you know? Alex is always like, don't talk about it, just do it. <laughs> but it's true, you know? But I'm pretty much like, I think that, you know, I think you need to talk about it. I think you need to talk about what do you like, what don't you like, are we doing it often enough, are your needs met, things like that. I don't know. Maybe that's just the counselor in me. But I'm also not afraid to talk about sex. Like, you know, I didn't grow up in a home of prudes. My family was would talk about sex and answer any questions, but in appropriate ways. We didn't, my parents didn't speak to me in inappropriate ways about sex, if that makes sense. Like, they weren't, like, gross about it and all that kind of stuff. Um... But appropriate questions, you know, and if I said something that was a little off the mark, my mom or dad would say to me, we don't say it that way, Peter, you know, like, this is how you say it, and, um, no, like, there were no snickers, you know, <laughs> like, like, you couldn't, at, you know, 40 years old, have a conversation about sex, so, um, I didn't grow up in that environment, now, I think there are appropriate and inappropriate ways to have that conversation. But I will say this, if you think about it, 
you know, most of us will talk about sex with our coworkers, not our sex life necessarily, but sex. We'll talk about sex with our friends. We'll talk about our sex lives sometimes with our friends. But who's the one person that we won't talk about our sex life with that we should be talking about it with is our partner. You know, we should be talking about our sex life. How many times have you talked to your, you know, like boyfriend or girlfriend or your, you know, good Judy and said like, we don't ever have sex anymore. You know, so-and-so says that they have sex like five times a week, but we don't have sex anymore. I don't even know if he finds me attractive. I don't even know if she finds me attractive. You know, it really hurts my feelings. They don't want to be with me. How many times have you had that conversation, but never once went to your partner and said, we don't have sex anymore. Like, I'm really concerned about this, you know, or like, we need to get on some kind of schedule. Back in the day when I did couples counseling, I would do this activity where um, couples had to do have some form of intimacy every day for a month. Like, they had to, like, make out or hold hands and walk or have sex or do something. Just lay together naked, whatever. Just bodies together, intimacy, sharing secrets with each other, those kinds of things. Because I think it brings people closer. I think it's really important. You guys are like, Peter, you've gone on too much about this, probably. There's this house, like, right back here that I say It's, like, huge. And they just keep on building on and on and on. And now there is a pool house behind there. And it's, like, this farmhouse. And I'm, like, wondering when somebody's going to move into it. It's gorgeous. It's, like, this, like, old... Looks like it's, like, out in the middle of nowhere, England. Which, if you live out in the middle of nowhere, England, I'm jealous. Um... If you live in England, did you ever see the Christmas movie Box of Delights? Oh my God. I don't know how I saw that movie back in the day, but I did. And then I, uh, and Water Babies. And I bought both of them on eBay and I own them at home on VCR tape. I love the Water Babies and the Box of Delights. And they're like, Water Babies is like a cartoon slash real people movie. It starts as real people and then they jump into the ocean and then once they jump into the ocean, they become cartoon characters. It's about a chimney sweep that's on the run. I love that movie so much. That's based on a book. And then The Box of Delights is based on um, a book too. And it's about this kid that goes and stays in this gorgeous house for Christmas out in the middle of nowhere. And the wolves are running and all this kind of stuff. I always kind of get obsessed with these like bizarre movies that, like that I might have saw like you know once in a blue moon a long time ago and like then I have to buy it so here are some examples there was a movie with um oh why can't I think of his name now the guy that was always in movies with Judy Garland he was real short I can't think of his name but anyway it was called It Came Upon a Midnight Clear, and it's about this little boy, and his grand they live in California, and his mom and dad are real mean, and his uh, grandpa, why can't I think of, Mickey Rooney, and they, um, his grandpa Mickey Rooney has a heart attack and dies, but then he comes back right away, and he came back because he has to find this Christmas angel that's gone missing, and the city of New York City has, where he, this guy used to be a police officer, has like no Christmas spirit anymore, so he and his grandson, you can get this on YouTube, it's legit on YouTube right now. It came upon a midnight clear. It's such a great movie. My favorite part is when they go to see the priest and then he has cookies and the little boy's asleep and they're talking about what's heaven really like. I love that scene. It's such a great mystery movie. It's such a great Christmas movie. But anyway, Annie Potts is in it too. And if you haven't seen that before, go check it out. It, caught, it came upon a midnight clear. And then there was another one with Angela Lansbury. I can't remember what it was called. Maybe like a Christmas to remember. And I can't remember who the woman was, but she's real famous. And she was in it, and they owned this store in this little small town. And then her husband ran it into the ground. And Angela Lansbury was her mother, but was dead. And then she, like, passed out. And she had this dream that her ma mom came to visit her on a sleigh and all this kind of stuff. And then they were going to, like, revamp the store and all this kind of stuff. I bought that on DVD, too. And, of course, Smoky Mountain Christmas with Dolly Parton. I'm dreaming of a Smoky Mountain Christmas. Christmas. You can take the girl from the country, I have heard them say, but you cannot take the country from the girl. Country girls. Um, I love that movie. It is probably my all-time favorite Christmas movie. Oh my lord, a rabbit. Um, I almost... Whew. I love, love, love Christmas movies. And then, um, love, 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 love Christmas movies so much. And then that movie. And then what else? Let's see.
Well, Season of Miracles that I talked about the other day is one of my all-time favorite movies with the cinnamon rolls. I used to always have to get uh, cinnamon rolls for Christmas morning because of that. So, yeah. And then, forever, I looked up this movie and I can't find it. I think I finally did find it, though, somewhere, but it was called, like, I know it, I saw what you did, I know who you are, and it was these two girls. Cheryl Ladd was in it, and she was the mom, and she would, like, go on a date with this guy, but these girls spotted this guy. The girl, the one girl was in some TV show, I can't remember what it was called, but this was, like, a made-for-TV movie. Anyway, and then they, like saw this guy and they got his card and they acted like they were 18 or something. Did you guys ever see this movie? Oh my god, it was so good. So they pranked him and they go, I saw what you did and I know who you are. And they're like, he's like, who is this? Because he had really like killed somebody. So then they, like he was coming to get them and it was, oh my god. I want to see that movie. I can't find that movie anywhere. And then Sorry, Wrong Number. Did you guys ever see that with Barbara Stanwyck? Oh my God, that movie is so scary. I love when they call, she calls the secretary and the secretary's playing bingo. That's my favorite. And she lives in like a women's halfway house. <sighs> and Arsenic and Old Lace. I could just go on and on and on about movies. I love movies. Movies have been my life. But I really kind of like movies that let me escape and are kind of like between like suspense and kind of funny sometimes, if that makes sense. Or just suspenseful. I like suspenseful movies. Frantic with Harrison Ford. Did you guys ever see that movie? That's where I fell in love with the musician Grace Jones because her music's in the movie. Um, Frantic is great. It's he and the mom from Eight is Enough. Um, Eight is enough to make your house a home. <laughs> but anyway, and he's in the shower and she leaves and when he comes out he doesn't know where she's at and then like they've kidnapped her and he can't find her oh so good oh my god it's such a great movie i have to watch that movie and marie with sissy spacek oh my god that movie is so good about marie run johnny it's a true story i think it's oh is it oklahoma maybe where she, be, she, like, figures out that they're, like, buying pardons for the state. Oh, my God, that, maybe Tennessee? I think it's Tennessee, where the secretary of, like, this, the governor is selling pardons. Do you guys know? This is a true story. Okay, this movie is terrifying. She was a single mother, followed, they tried to hunt her down and all this kind of stuff because she exposed it. And she found out that they, it was called Marie, M-A-R-I-E, with Sissy Spacek. Hands down, one of the finest movies I've ever seen in my entire life. She's so good in it. And it's a true story, and I followed this woman on Facebook. I friended her, and she friended me back. I don't know why she did, but she did. And, uh... She's probably like, who is this fool? I did this about two years ago. She's probably like, who is this fool that is friending me on Facebook? Because that's me. I'm a stalker of people that I love. And I saw that movie. Like, I saw that movie like 20 years ago. And then I like, who is this? Somebody sent it. People send me YouTube videos all the time. But anyway, you guys should go check out... Um, Marie, if you haven't seen it. Oh my god, it's such a great movie. I can see this one scene when this woman gets really upset and she's like, what do you mean I don't get the pardon? And she's like, they said if I paid, it be everything would be okay. If I paid, everything would be okay. And Marie figures it out. I love it so much. It's such a great movie. Do you guys love movies? I bought those little notebooks because I was going to start keeping a list of all of my favorite movies. Into the Night with Jeff Goldblum and Michelle Pfeiffer is hands down my favorite movie. I don't even... I own it on VCR, but I don't own it on DVD. I really want to own it so bad. And Heart to Heart. I love Heart to Heart. I think I have like the... I was going to say the first season of Heart to Heart, but I don't think I do. But I do have season one, part one and part two of Love Boat now. I'm so excited because I love that show. And I have like Fantasy Island, like the first season. My mom bought me that a long time ago. And I want the Designing Women's because the Designing Women's are my favorites. I don't have any of them. I have like one that's like... Um, 
just like this, it's like a, it has like six episodes or something on it. It's like the six best episodes or something. Did you guys ever watch Designing Women? I love that show. I don't, you know, like, here's the thing is that my life is not that bad. I mean, honest to God, I have a pretty good life, you know? I have had a pretty good life for a very long time, you know? The worst thing that's happened to me in the last 10 years is that my mom passed away. Well, I mean, people pass away. I miss my mom, but, you know, and I got sober, and before that, 10 years before that, I mean, I've had a good life, you know? An enjoyable life. But, like, movies, TV, and books allow me to, like, escape the daily life or make my life feel like more exciting or whatever but I just love movies books and TV so much don't you like I just am like obsessed with it all so yeah I didn't even see that neighborhood over there and those houses are so cute Mill Grove anyway you guys well I'm gonna get off here for tonight and I love you we're trying to do something nice for somebody every day aren't we well, wave at somebody that you've never, say hi and smile this to a total stranger on the street. That's what you have to do today, okay? I love you guys, and I hope you have a wonderful Friday evening, and I will see you tomorrow. Happy weekend. Bye.